allow me to introduce you to the awesome Sarah Coey. Sarah is a 28-year-old artist who was born and raised in Dunblane, Scotland. She attended Jordan Stone College of Art and Design, and she got a bachelor with honors in 2012. She began working as a learning support assistant, and then she actually stopped to just become a full-time artist. She is a wife and a mother to a young 18-month-old boy, and they all live in the countryside of Scotland. Her unique style has developed through play and exploration, but has definitely been inspired through the beauty of the Scottish countryside. Her colorful, rainbow-tastic artwork is inspiring our color wheel project that will brighten up the hallway and help refresh our memory on the color spectrum and the order of the rainbow and of course how the color wheel works. Okay, the first thing that you're going to do when you get your paper plate is write your name and your room number on the back. So the back side is the side that curves up and then once you flip this paper plate over you're going to want to make a small dot towards the center of your plate. So something small and as close to the center as you can get it. Now we're going to do a rotation of colors. So one thing that you will want to have by you is the color wheel. Images at your table that will help you with choosing your colors for your paper plate. So the very uh, first thing you want to do is kind of take a glance at one of the color wheels. I'm going to look at this one here and you are just going to start with whatever color is given to your table, which will most likely be the color that you are sitting at. So for the purposes of my demonstration, I'm going to start with this magenta, which is going to represent our red. So this pink color is a very dark. Uh, the reason why I like to use this for color mixing is because we will get a nice brighter purples and brighter red, uh, like uh, not red, but like oranges as well. And Sarah Co uses a lot of pink in her paintings. So I thought a nice magenta to kind of fill in as a red. And sometimes when we do color mixing, it's better to use this nice magenta color anyways. So I am going to start in with the magenta. And every time you get a new color, you are going to start from the very center. So you don't want to press your brush down too far. So I am going to take my brush and start nice and high up, meaning my brush is nice and high, not smushed down against my plate. And I'm going to take my brush and press down as I go, and make a nice brush stroke. So you can kind of go back and forth, but you are taking that paint and you are spreading it out. You want to paint like you are creating a piece of pizza, kind of like a triangle. So imagine that this is a whole pizza and you are just painting one slice of that pizza. We're not drawing any lines because we're not worried about being exact. So I am going to make just a pizza slice with this magenta color, which almost does look like red. It will just mix a little bit better. So now that I'm done with this color, I would put the brush back into the pie pan. Make sure that your paint cup stays in the pie pan because I have all my colors on one pie pan. That's why I took mine out. And then show me that you are ready for the next color. So I am going to continue on with the next color that would be coming to me. The next color could possibly be purple or it might be an orange. I'm going to go ahead with the orange. So I'm going to open up the orange, get that next brush, make sure to use just the tip of the brush to start, starting in that center and coming straight out, making that piece of pizza. Now you'll wanna mix in a little bit with your magenta so that you might get a little bit of this red-orange color. So now this piece is going to be a little bit bigger.
And if we need to, we will probably end up getting this first color again, just so that we can make sure that our sizes and everything fits. You might not end up fitting everything perfectly. Some might be more narrow, some might be bigger, and that's okay too. So now I'm going to continue on with the next colors, working around in a circle, just like you see on the color wheel. So you want to make sure you go over the previous color a little bit. So that way we, it mixes. So I'm getting this yellow orange color. If you get a little too orange, you could always brush your brush on your placemat, get some fresh yellow and then spread that out. So that way you have a bright yellow as well. You want to make sure you give yourself enough yellow so that way you can mix some of it with the next color, which is green. You want to make sure that you leave some of that regular color. I wouldn't want to take that green all the way over to that yellow orange. So make sure you leave a little bit of each of the colors. Remember to look back at your color wheel if you need help. So I want to make sure I have some regular orange, some yellow orange, and then some yellow green, and then green. And then giving myself enough green on my plate so I can add in some blue green. Thinking back to making this pizza slice shapes. Narrow towards the center, coming out like a letter V or like a triangle. Now your last color may or may not be the same size as the others, depending on how much space you use. You might have only a little bit of space. That's okay, just try to squeeze it in. Notice I'm mixing with the blue, and then with this violet color, I may or may not be able to mix with the first color because your first color might be a little too dry to mix with it. So you can see, not really mixing a whole lot. So that's why getting that first color again is going to be important. And now you can see my color wheel is all finished. I have my reddish magenta that mixes in with my orange for red orange, regular orange, yellow orange, regular yellow, yellow green, green, blue green, blue, blue violet, violet, and red violet. Next week, we will be adding some fun paint strokes on top of these colors using some tints like we see in Sarah Coey's artwork.